All right, good morning, everybody. I want to share a little bit of helpful advice for anybody that's running the Duff's lift-off door hinges. I picked up a set at Supercell, and very good investment in my opinion. However, as I was talking to Michael at the campfire, he said they can be a little difficult to install. And I found that to be very true. My first attempt, uh, my brother and I fought with it for about an hour or two and couldn't ever even get close to getting them to lift off, drop down in there easily, or even swing on the hinges very well. Um, I'm gonna share you, with you a little hint, something that I, I got frustrated. I walked away from it, thought about it for a little while, and I decided that I came up with a, a really good um, solution for getting the alignment done quickly and easily. Now, I'm going to try to do this with a cell phone, but you can see here a couple of the hints Michael gave me prior to removing the old door hinges, the factory hinges. You have the door on there, have it in a good position where it's swinging not, and uh, easily and latching good. And as you can see, when you come up where the hinges were and trace out the hinge with a Sharpie so that... I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but I traced out and outlined the hinges with a Sharpie and then on the door side, I would outline the bolts with a Sharpie as well to give you a guide for where to start. Now, that's the easy part, obviously. You take the old door hinges off. Um, my, my hint, and before I even get to that, something Michael showed me um, when you install these, it's essential that top of the hinge to the top of the hinge be either 12 inches exactly or 12 and 1 16th inches exactly. That's so that the pins rest properly onto the bushings. All right, so I got mine set at 12 inches exactly um, both sides of the hinge so they're nice and square with each other. But this is my hint. After getting really frustrated and walking away from it, I thought that I need a guide for mounting up these hinges better than just tracing out with a Sharpie because that did not work very well. My conclusion was I went to Tractor Supply and I took a hinge in there and I got a half inch by 36 rod, smooth plated. That's the pretty much the same diameter as the pin. Now, what I did is I placed these pins, or this rod, through the pins and had them in a pretty good position where they lined up nice and it passed through there pretty easily, like so. Where that rod should slide through those hinges fairly easily. Now, I don't think my rod is perfectly straight, so that's another bit of advice. Make sure you get one as straight as can be. However, that is a wonderful way. You know that your hinges are, the doorpost hinges are lined up well, and it eliminates a lot of the confusion. That way, your primary concern is the door side hinges, just making sure that their pins are vertical to work with the hinge mounted side. Well, like I said, I just passed this hinge through there and then I mounted these to the hinge posts knowing that they were in a good position. So this rod cost me like $5.50. It's probably the best investment I've done on this daggum Bronco. I'm going to sit it down so you can kind of see. Something Michael was talking about lining stuff up. It's important to have the door at the uh, 45 degree angle. Work off the hinges. And this was me doing this all by myself this morning. He, it's obviously always better to have a helper, but that rod, I might as well have been my helper this morning because I was able to do this by myself in I don't know, about 30 minutes. And I found it's also a lot more helpful to place your hand here 
lifting off as opposed to down here. I don't know. I guess it keeps it from crying. All in all, very happy with the hinges now that I've figured out how to install them. So now I get to go do the passenger side. But conclusion, save yourself a heck of a lot of frustration and buy that rod for less than $6. It will make you cuss a lot less. <laughs>